Hi guys! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to harvest, collect, and process acorns for eating. Yeah, that's right. Acorns are actually edible. So you can find acorns from oak trees, and oak trees are pretty much in every neighborhood and street side around here especially. So it's easy to find oak trees and find the acorns from them in the fall. So you'll be able to find them between September and November and you can tell they're really ripe and ready when they come easily out of their caps and they fall really easily and most of them have actually fallen to the ground already. That's when you can tell they're done. And these were like raining around me when I was collecting them. So if you find some that still have caps on and it's really hard and impossible to get the caps off, that's when you can tell it's no good for food. But I do collect some of these for uh, decoration. So how you can tell oak trees are different from each other is by identifying the leaves. And this one has pretty pointy, sharp ends to the leaves. So that's how you can tell it's a red oak and the acorns have a lot more tannins in them than other oaks. So here I'm doing a little smash test. I'm taking my foot and smashing the acorn just to have a quick preview of what it looks like inside. And that's perfect looking. You want that pale, creamy white in the center, no black spots or anything. So this one has a hole in it, and that's how you can really tell it's not a good acorn, because a weevil's been in there. And I'm giving it a smash test just to show you guys what it looks like inside. And you can tell a weevil's been in there and eaten a lot of the stuff and pooped it out and carved out an exit hole. All holes in acorns are weevil exit holes. So this is the acorns I collected, all the good acorns. And this is only about a third of what was dropping. So I like to open these with just a rock. I find that that's safer and easier to hit the acorns with a rock than a hammer. And they look nice inside. So I cracked some of these, but decided that since these red acorns have such a high tannin content, it would be unreasonable to try and pour all this water and leach them out by hand, so I decided to bury them in a hole in my garden. I had a big hole from a compost pile from earlier, so I just poured them all in this big hole in my garden and just covered it up with leaves and things around. So this is how you leach it naturally because this is what squirrels do. They bury it underground because over winter and spring, the rain and snow will uh, wash the tannins out naturally and that's how you get it a little more edible. And that's what squirrels do and that's what Native Americans have done as well. So in the meantime, my friend Jim showed me this lovely big white oak tree in the city next to the street. And he and I harvested these together and I showed him how I process acorns. So we picked all of these really beautiful kind of elongated bullet-shaped acorns with a really nice brown color to them. And there were tons of these on the ground, so we picked them all up on the sidewalk, on the dirt next to it. So you can tell this is a white oak because it has more rounded lobes so that you can tell it has a lower tannin content than red oaks. And I gave this one a smash test as well just to see what it looks like on the inside. And this is also a nice creamy white, looks good, except that the outside is a little dark brown and black, which I noticed a lot of these are. Also, if you shake an acorn and it's like bouncy and hollow inside, that's how you can tell it's no good. So just throw that out. So we got a lot of really nice, beautiful, gorgeous acorns to make into food, which we were really excited about. So we took these back to my friend Jim's place where he had a really nice nutcracker contraption and that's how he shelled these ones. So this worked out really well. It's nice to have a nutcracker to do it with. Either a nutcracker or a rock, those work well. So as we were shelling these, we noticed that most of them were black and brown on the outside and even on the inside. So that was a bit scary because we thought, oh no, we wasted all our time picking them. What if all of these are no good and they're not edible? 
but we decided to give them a try anyway because like 90% of them were really dark. So if anything, we could experiment with some of these lighter acorns from the same tree that Jim picked last year. So we could still see how those turned out. And if they're edible, then we'll have a whole bunch of nice acorn flour to use for all our efforts. So we gave it a go. So we laid them all out, all the uh, half pieces on a tray to dehydrate, as well as some of the whole acorns that we didn't shell. We decided to put all of them in the dehydrating racks to dehydrate for at least a few days. It ended up being about a week of dehydrating in there. And that actually turned out to not work so well for us because it turned those acorns into basically solid rocks that were impossible to blend and even to hammer outside. It worked a little bit, but it just kind of split them into halves and most of them were still whole. Even with a brick, it didn't work too well. It was just still really coarse and really tedious work. So that made us nervous that we made them too hard with rocks. So we took the rest of the acorn shells and put that in the compost. Acorn shells are really good compost and apparently also a really good fuel source. So we took these dried acorn pieces that were like rock solid and decided to rinse them and soak them in water. Just have them soaking for a few days to kind of soften them up and also kickstart the tannin leaching process at the same time, which seemed like a pretty good idea. So Jim poured the rest of these black acorns that we picked just to put them all together in this big pot and see what would happen. Now, as you can see, about a week or so later, the color actually lifted a bit with um, pouring out the water every day or twice a day. So this was really exciting, figuring out that maybe it was just that the tannic acid collected around the outside because it was washing out. And we were excited that this was actually going to work out and they would be edible. So we took some of Jim's acorns from last year and they were much easier to blend. And we blended them and he sifted them into a bowl. I mean, he blended them. He was doing most of the work and I was just filming it. And there were some of the dark acorns that were actually able to blend, so he mixed a little bit of those dark acorn pieces as well. And this is the consistency you ideally want to leach with, because that's going to leach faster when you have all of that surface area. You can do it with whole acorns, and that'll be fine. It'll just take a lot longer than if you grind it as small and flower-like as possible. So some of this lighter flour Jim ended up pouring into a big jar and uh, divided it up into smaller jars that each of us could take home and cook with. So the rest of this flour we started leaching out, the lighter flour, and as you can see a lot of this dark tannish color is coming out and that's the tannic acid that's being washed out with the water as the acorn mush has fallen to the bottom. And between uh, replacing with water, you want to do a little taste test to taste if it's still bitter or if it's bland. And if it's completely bland, it's ready. If it's still a little bitter or astringent, then you just go ahead and fill it up with clean new water and keep doing this process once a day at least, ideally twice a day or even three times a day, depending on how fast the acorn mush falls to the bottom. And just keep doing that until it's ready. Now, as for those dark acorns that lightened up in the water, Jim dried those up and blended those at least a little bit and then started to mill them. So we were milling this in from these chunks into a fine flour. And as you can see, I'm actually doing some of the work as well. So we kept milling this and this mill is actually better than a gym. I mean, who needs gym equipment when you can mill your own flour? I like functional exercise, makes you happier. So this is how those dark acorns turned out. It turned out into this beautiful flower, perfect color and texture, looked like golden sand. So we were really excited that this actually turned out to be worthwhile in the end. So Jim divvied this up into 
four pint size jars. I think those are pint size. So we split them in half and that's what I got. So this is all of my half of the acorn flour and I decided to take some of it and do a hot water test. So I have learned that um, cooking it, doing a preliminary cooking with a little bit of hot water will be able to tell you how it's going to taste when it's finished. So you take a little tablespoon of the acorn flour, put it in a bowl or a cup, and you pour boiling hot water over it, just enough to cover it and then stir it really well so that starts to cook the acorn flour so that you can really know how it's actually gonna taste because some acorn flour that tastes fairly bland, maybe a little chalky, will suddenly taste very bitter when it's cooked. And you can um, figure that out ahead of time if you do a little hot water test and then you know that you need to keep leaching it a little bit. So this was still pretty bitter and I wasn't surprised by that because it leached while it was still pretty big chunks. So I tried a little bit of the smaller, lighter flour from the earlier batch of flour. A tablespoon of that, as well as some more boiling hot water. And that actually turned out pretty bitter as well, which I was a little more surprised by because that was fine flour that got leached. But I was fine with that. Just more to leach all together. So I poured all the jars into one really large saucepan and poured in some wet mush from a failed quick leach attempt with some of that lighter flour and just poured over all of it with a lot of nice clean cold water. Enough to fill the top of the pot. The more water, the better. And of course you wanna stir it really well, get all the lumps out and make it really even so that all of the particles are getting in touch with the water and getting that tannic acid out so that it won't be bitter anymore. And just cover that and put it back in the fridge until you do the process later on. So this was the next day and as you can see it's still quite tan the water so there's still a lot of color in there and I just poured it out until it got to the acorn mush on the bottom Sometimes it's a little hard not to get a little mush out of there. So this is what it looks like at the bottom. There's still a ways to go until that water is clear and there's no more tannic acid in there. But the tannic acid is also useful for uh, tanning hides. It's antiseptic. It, can, it has a lot of uses actually. So I'm doing more taste tests in between leaching and it's still got some work to do, which is not surprising. So I poured some new clean water over it and put it back in the fridge and kept doing that a couple times a day until the water got clearer and clearer. And next week, I'll share a recipe with you guys with the finished acorn flour. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See ya.